Hola y buenos días. Bienvenidos a los diarios de Gordon. This is another tips for the past tense uh, video. Now, hoy hace mucho frío uh, y, y sí, mucho frío. Por eso llevo puesta la braga. Um, okay, so I want to talk about the present perfect tense today and just a couple of tips on that. What is the present perfect tense? This is the he comido, he hablado, he vivido. Okay, this I have talked, I have eaten, I have lived. Now, first things first, this is a very, very, very common tense here in Spain. For, for English speakers from the UK and then for English speakers from the US, there are different challenges with this tense. In the UK, we use it pretty much the same way as the Spanish speakers do here in Spain. But what we don't know is why we use it. Okay, we know that we have to use it, but in the UK, we don't really know why. In the US, there's even a bigger challenge because it isn't the typical way that, that most Americans speak. They'll tend to say, what did you do today? Um, in the UK, we'll tend to say, what have you done today? And here in Spain, they'll tend to say, what have you done today? ¿Qué has hecho hoy? Okay, so for the Americans that don't use this tense, typically um, there's a little bit more of a challenge. But anyway, it's there and I'm sure they've all heard it being used. So it's not a mystery tense. It's just not something that's typically in the vocab. So what are the, when do we use it? When do we use this tense? What, when do we say he comido? And when do we say comí? I ate. I have eaten. I ate. Well, the tip most important one is to realize that you must be in the same block of time. You must be in the same block of time to use that. And I'm going to explain what I mean. Okay. If I am in the morning and I talk about something that I have done, listen to me, I have done this morning, then I will use the present perfect tense. Here in Spain, I'm going to talk about the rules here in Spain. So I would say, esta mañana... Me he levantado a las ocho. Me he vestido. Y me he lavado. No, al revés. I got washed before I got dressed. So it, it makes a lot more sense. Um, so I'm telling you what I have done this morning. Why? Because I'm still in the morning. However, if I move out of the morning, if I'm in the afternoon and I want to tell you what I've done this morning, then I will not use that tense Typically, I will say, esta mañana me levanté, okay? Me vestí, me lavé. I still got those the wrong way around, but it doesn't matter. Um, so, when I move out of the time period, the block of time that I'm talking about, I will then change the tense, typically to preterite and imperfect and all the other tenses, okay? So, we use this tense when we are still in the same block of time. But lots of people get mixed up and lots of people call this the recent past. And this is a big mistake because, yes, it can be your recent past, but it doesn't have to be your recent past. I'll give you an example. Look, if, I, if I'm walking along and I fall, okay, I fall. Now, I can say, joder, me caigo. That's the most, whoops, me caigo. That's the most common. It's in present tense. But equally, I could say, me caído, or I can say, me caí. I can choose, it doesn't, there isn't a rule to say because it's recent past, you must use the present perfect. There's no rule about that. You use what you want. But what it is as a tense is the same block of time. So it can be recent, but it can be this. For example, I can say, um, ¿Cuántos países has conocido en tu vida? How many countries have you been to, have you known in your life? Now, that's not a recent because it could be like 30 years ago since I traveled. But when I talk about that, I'm going to say, Ah, sí, yo fui a Nueva York hace 30 años. Okay? I'm not going to use the present perfect. Why? Because I'm not in that block of time. That's long before. That's not today. Okay? And so, but if, if, and this is the qualifier, if I wanted to say in my life, then yes, I'm in the same block of time. Because wh where you are in your block of time with the present perfect is you're always at the end of this block. 
you're in the last moment. Even if it's your life, you're always in the last moment of your life. All right? Although they do extend out, so don't get worried. So you're always in the last moment. So I could say, eh, he conocido eh, Nueva York, he conocido Paris, he conocido... So I'm using the I have, but really what you're saying is in my life. All right? You can't say, en mi vida he conocido, because that means something completely different, would you believe? Just as an aside, if you say, en mi vida he, and then a past participle, en mi vida he visto esto, that means I have never seen this in my life. Isn't that bizarre? Like you, they say, in my life I have seen this, but what they mean is, I've never seen this in my life. So you'll hear lots of Spanish speakers saying, en mi vida, and then they leave it, like, punto suspensivo. They don't fill it, they don't fill it in the rest, but they would say, if they did, they would say, he visto, not no he visto, okay? So just curious, eh? Um, the sun's out now. Good, it's warming me up a bit. So, blocks of time, what can they be? Esta mañana, esta tarde, esta noche, hoy. That's why we say, ¿qué has hecho hoy? ¿Qué has hecho hoy? What have you done today? I'm in this, because we're still in today. But, ¿qué hiciste ayer? All right, because yesterday is not in my block of time. So I have to say, ¿qué hiciste? I can't say, ¿qué has hecho ayer? That is, that's the only hard and fast rule. You cannot use this tense for being outside of the block of time that you're in. So, hoy, esta semana, este mes, este año, yeah, esta década, esta vida, okay, este siglo. So you can really, you can use it for whatever period of time that is, you're still in. And that's what the present perfect is all about. Now, understand that Spanish people break the rules. And I'm going to finish with this. This is an important little point I want to I want to bring. Spanish people break the rules because native speakers can break rules all of the time. Everywhere in the Spanish-speaking world as well as the English-speaking world, somebody is breaking the rule of everything at the moment. Okay? That's what native speakers do. But that's not what we can do. It's That's not our remit to go around breaking the rules. And so what happens is, we get this, I've, I've come across a lot of students that I, I would call, they are loophole lookers for, okay? They're always looking for a loophole. And so I'll have questions like this. Oh, somebody used this sentence, but didn't use the subjunctive. So is it okay not to use the subjunctive? And of course the answer is, well, yes, it is okay. However, 99% of the people use the subjunctive there. And a very small amount, 1% might not. Okay, so our job is not to find the loopholes and find ways around not saying something when the majority of people say it. What our job is, is to do what the majority of people do, not what the minority do. Because if you do, if you work on finding loopholes about, well, here we don't have to use the subjunctive, and here, actually, I can use the uh, imperfect when you are saying that the, pre the preterite's what people use. What happens is you end up, you'll end up with a very strange kind of Spanish. It's like, you know, the extreme in everything. So don't look for loopholes. Look for this. This is the system. Find out what the majority of people say. Copy that. Right? And then, when you become an expert at what the majority say, then you can start playing around with the 1% and messing around with it. Okay, that's fun. But it's not fun if you haven't got the 99% control. And that's, that's why I say, don't look for loopholes to get out of the subjunctive. Learn the subjunctive first, and then be aware of where you don't need to use it. But learn to use it. All right, so that's our job. Not looking for loopholes, looking for the majority. Let's be with the majority and just copy what the majority do. Bueno, eso es todo. Entonces, nos vemos la próxima vez. Hasta luego, chicos.